Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Mech Lab, where we try to be a better mech commander every day. Today we're going to be talking about ATMs and MMLs, that's Advanced Tactical Missiles and Multiple Missile Launchers. These are two of the most flexible weapons in the entire game, because they're good at long range and short range. I was asked by one of my subscribers if I could do a video on how ATMs work. If you'd like to request a video, please leave a comment down below. So we'll be starting with those. ATMs fire three different kinds of ammunition. Standard, extended range, and high explosive. Now, this does mean that for maximum effect, they have to carry all three ammo types, but technically you don't have to, and some designs don't. All ATMs benefit from Artemis, meaning that they get a plus two to their cluster rules, and all ATMs hit in five point damage clusters, just like LRMs do. So we're gonna compare them to some more standard missiles. For your standard LRMs, you have a minimum range of six, and then your range Range brackets are 7, 14, 21. Does one damage per missile. For ATMs, their ER missiles have a minimum range of 4 and range brackets of 9, 18, 27. Also one damage per missile. So if you have an ATM 3 and you roll 3 missiles, you still only do 3 damage. But if you have an ATM 6 and you roll 6 missiles, you're going to hit in a 5 point cluster and a 1 point cluster because all ATMs hit in 5 point damage clusters. That's still true for high explosive ATMs, which have the same range as SRMs, but do three damage per missile. So they're not as good at crit seeking as SRMs are, because SRMs hit in two damage clusters, they're going to get a lot more hits on the enemy. But doing three damage per missile means that even an ATM-3 can do up to nine damage, which is pretty devastating at close range. Standard ATMs are pretty much comparable to dead fire missiles. They have the exact same range brackets and they do the same amount of damage. But, instead of a minus three to your cluster roll, ATMs get a plus two to the cluster roll. So they actually do a heck of a lot more damage than dead fire LRMs. Let's go back into Mega Mech here quickly. We have your standard ATMs with extended range ammo, and this mech is already in range of the enemy Sasquatch. But if we look at the Sasquatch's Gauss rifle, it's not even close to being in range yet. And anyone who's played Battletech for a long time knows about the Golden BB effect, where even these ATM-3s, which are only going to be doing like two to three damage, still have the potential to get a through armor critical and crit out the engine, or blow up some ammunition, get a headshot, all these kinds of things. So having that extreme long range, pretty much the longest range weapon in the game, does have its merits. This is very different from the MML, which is sort of the inner sphere equivalent of the ATM. The MML is capable of firing any kind of LRM ammo or any kind of SRM ammo. That means that it can load smoke, infernos, all those kinds of weird and interesting things. One thing that I will mention is that you can't put dead fire ammo into MMLs. I'm not sure why that is. It was just a balancing decision that was done. So you can see here we've got a, a Hawk Moth gunship, got two MML5s, some ER medium lasers, and it's SRMs and it's got LRMs. So it can do that sort of mid-range fighting where it's going to use maybe the ER medium lasers and the LRMs, or it can just go for that close-in skirmishing fighting style. With its great speed of 1117, it can definitely get behind the enemy and try and get some hits on their back armor, or just try and fish for crits at close range and then you've also got like this archer for example it's got some light ppcs for long range it's got an er medium laser for in close and then it's got a bunch of mmls so it can either fight at that long range or once the enemy gets in close you know, we switch over to the srms and we just blast them at close range with a whole bunch of crit seeking shots so mmls are great for discouraging enemies from getting close to your sniper unit or really good for an escort unit which is what the archer typically is, you know, it's standard loadout. It's like a bunch of LRMs plus some medium lasers. It's got reasonable speed at 4.6. It's got good armor. This is an escort unit. And with the MML, it can fulfill that role even potentially a little bit better. Although this archer in particular could probably benefit from like a couple extra medium lasers and a few less tons of ammo. So let's just compare the MML and the ATM to one another. Another weapon that you might consider in this sort of role would be the clan LRM. 
because it does kind of the same thing. It can fire at long range and it can fire up close. It just doesn't have those really powerful SRMs or high explosive missiles in close. But again, you can use all of the specialty ammo like Swarm and Inferno with them, whereas ATMs can't. They just have the three types of ammo that they can take, nothing else. So they do lack some utility in that way, but they make it up by having really good progressive damage as you get closer to them or as they close with you. Now, MML's baseline don't have Artemis. So if we want to compare these two weapons fairly, you really should add one ton and one critical slot to the MML compared to the ATM. And when we look at tonnage and heat, we can see that the ATM is a lot better overall. However, MMLs tend to have a lot more ammo per ton, which might make up the difference there in terms of how much tonnage you need. Also, you have to take Artemis on the lower end ATMs, whereas you might just want basic MML 3s versus ATM 3s for just some DACA, some SRM spam up close, a couple of small shots that you could pretty much compare to an AC2 at long range, or even just for laying down smoke. Now, the battle value comparison is where things get really out of hand. The ATMs generally are going to cost about double in battle value what an MML of a similar size launcher is going to cost. You can see MML5 is 45 battle value, ATM6 is 105, ATM9 147 battle value, MML9 86 battle value. ATMs also do get a little bit bigger than MMLs can, so you can take those really big launchers, ATM12s, they're almost equivalent to an LRM15, except it has much longer range, has much better damage up close, and better damage at mid-range. But again, you're looking at a lot of ammo that you're going to have to take with this thing. An ATM12 by itself probably wants about five tons, whatever you think that the role of the mech is going to be. For example, the Dragonfly is really fast, so maybe for this ATM, you don't even want the extended range. You're just going to take high explosive and standard. Now, in this case, there's only three of them, so having 20 ammo for three ATM-3s is plentiful. But if you had three ATM-12s, you definitely wouldn't be <laughs> in as good of a position. Now, with the Rabid Coyote, this is a bit of a bigger mech. It's not nearly as fast, just that 5-8 movement. It's carrying 6 tons of ammo. It has 6 launchers, and it's carrying 6 tons of ammo. You're getting a little over 3 volleys per ton, so this is about right. I think that you'd probably want about 2 for each. Maybe less high explosive if you plan on having this thing just sit back and use the ER, maybe the standard ATMs. Dirk Lloyd, I hope this helps you with your group and uh, explaining to them how ATMs work, and a little bit of tactics on how to use them and comparing them to one of the other more flexible inner sphere weapons. I myself am a big fan of MMLs, but for competitive battle tech, I think that ATMs might be a little bit overcosted. The reason being that the high explosive ATMs do a ridiculous amount of damage, so you end up paying a lot of battle value for that if you're only going to be using them for the ER and standard. You really have to make those high explosive rounds work for you in order to get your battle value out of them. So I would actually recommend if you're taking ATMs, you probably want them on something that's going to get in close and blast people at close range. So something like a brawler, maybe equipped with a lot of medium lasers as well, or some other sort of high damage close range weapons, LBX 10 or 20s, for example, would probably be a good pairing with this. That's it for today, everyone. Thank you so much for watching. Please like and subscribe and share the content with your fellow mech warriors. If you disagree with me about ATMs, please leave a comment down below. I'd love to hear from you. Or like I said, if you would like to request a video on a certain topic, leave it in a comment down below. Thanks for watching everyone and have a great day.